Hey folks, welcome back to Gaming Garbage, where we take a look at games, review and preview the ones that we can, chat about the gaming news in the industry, which we'll do today, and of course stream for fun, which we'll do the uh, off-the-cuff pretty soon um, this week. Yeah, things have been a little late. It's just been really busy. I've worked 72 hours this week. I got a couple days off, and then I work another 48. Got a couple more, and then I work another 72. So this month is going to be pretty busy with work. I'm also a family man. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. But yeah, life has just been really busy, so things have just pushed back a little bit. So thank you for giving me some of that grace. But hey, let's go ahead and get into the gaming news. So today we're going to be talking about... Uh, some games, how they're scoring, like Mirage and FC24. We're also going to talk about the actors and writers strike that's going on right now and how that's going to affect gaming. We're also going to chat about um, a uh, developer having a lawsuit, so that's not good. And then uh, we're going to have an update for the KOTAR uh, remake and also an update on the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. Um, and then an update at the channel. Uh, for the end. So, so, yeah, the FTC. So, for those of you that don't know, maybe you're not big FIFA fans, which is fine. <clears throat> I'm not either. I'm right there with you. But uh, FIFA wanted a billion dollars for this year's game. And EA was like, no, we're not going to pay that. And so, instead, EA created the football club, which is FC. And that's basically replacing FIFA. And as of, I think, last week... FIFA has finally been removed as, like, an option to buy. Um, because the IEA doesn't have the licensing anymore. You know, once it's expired, they can't technically use it or sell it anymore because it's not their intellectual property. And so, uh, and so yeah, but now we have the FC. And so, so far, the FC 24 this year. This is their first football club game, which they've been promoting this to death. I mean, this is going across different stadiums. They're marketing this. This is on clothes and other merch. It's pretty crazy, but yeah, they really want this to succeed. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so far, the score off of Metacritic is that uh, the critics give it a 76 out of 100 and users give it a uh, 28 out of 100 or 2.8 out of 10. Which is quite the disparity. And we've talked about this before, folks, how the critics seem to give things usually a lot better reviews. And we almost kind of can't even trust them anymore because why would we? You know, they're not looking at the type of aspects in the game that we're thinking of or that are important to us. And in a way, they're being paid to review. And so, yeah, if you don't review well, well, eventually you're not going to review anything as a company, right? So users are mainly complaining about the microtransactions, <clears throat> just like they have for Madden. Just like they have for NBA 2K24, or 2K NBA 24, let me get that right. But yeah, the, uh, the microtransactions are really bad. There's even a loot box that's $30 that gives you a 5% chance for a legendary player. Think of that. $30 a drop to maybe have a 1 in 20 chance of getting a legendary player. Now that's better than usually what loot boxes have been. But still, who's going to pay 30 bucks how many times to, uh, to actually get that? That's pretty insane. Also, they're complaining about the animations. Um, some of them are not very smooth. Some of them kind of like snap or lock into place. We've also seen that in Madden. Um, the animations actually look pretty good for NBA... Uh, for 2K NBA 24, for the most part, there's still some issues there, too, especially on PC. It's always on PC. I feel bad for you guys. Um, also, the grinding in the game is, like, really, really bad. It's really elongated and ground down, and there's a lot of things to work toward, and, yeah, the grinding is just frustrating. There's also passing issues in the game, so, like, the animations don't quite sync together like they should, or you're not able to pass really when you want to because, again, of animation issues. Um, there's also a ton of game modes in the game, which is great, uh, but the game modes are, are in such a way where for a lot of them you have to make a new team, uh, or you have to make a new roster, and so, um, it's actually a little complicated to figure out he, even how just to play multiplayer or play with your buds to, uh, to get, get them into a game and, and, uh, you know, play them on the field. And then, to the menu system itself is just very vast. 
right? Just kind of like Starfield where there's a ton of menus to go through. There's a ton of different things to click on. So the variety is good, but like things aren't really simplified and there's really kind of no easy access to some of the game modes or some of the ways you wish to play in the game. And so this is really kind of frustrating people. Also, the game is buggy. So again, there's all these animations issues. There's... um. There's issues, too, with players' faces and, and stuff uh, not quite looking right. And uh, really, use, FIFA users are saying this is a new low for FIFA, quote-unquote. So this is worse than what they've already been making, which already was worse than previously what they had. One benefit that some people are enjoying is that they have women's soccer as well. Excuse me, football, if you're in Europe. Excuse me. <clears throat> Take a sip of water here. Oh, yeah, I'm still trying to get over something. Boy, it's frustrating. I'm just like mildly sick for like two weeks in a row now. It's probably COVID. You know, screw it. I'm going to kill it. And, uh, but yeah, they like that the fact that um, there is women's soccer. So you have more teams and stuff. Um, but most people aren't that interested in women's soccer. Uh, or even other women's sports either, unless it's like a volleyball or something, right? We all know why, folks. Some good things is that at least the emotes are free. You know, usually in most games you kind of have to grind for those, or you have to, like, pay for those. Those are just put right into the game uh, at the start. There are some that you can work toward, which is nice, but yeah, they're actually not microtransactioning emotes for your players on the field. Doing a little victory dance or something, right? <clears throat> but yeah, this is just another failure of uh, of other sports games like Madden and NBA, um, or excuse me, yeah, NBA 24 this year. The 24 games have been horrible. I mean, Madden is worse. The technology that was supposed to be better. The animations aren't linking or aren't doing what they should. The AI also for all of the NPCs <clears throat> is almost like frying its brain because it can't keep up. It can't make the right call. Um... Or, uh, or prioritize correctly on the field when a play is happening. And then, too, some of the animations... <coughs> excuse me. They don't even happen. Uh, the animations themselves in Madden are just... Yeah. Your players are literally just kind of running into each other. And then the game is figuring out, oh, yeah, there should be an animation for something. And so it just kind of snaps into place. Or it produces the wrong animation for the NPC. And things are just messed up. With uh, 2K NBA... The players are frustrated with that, with just the ever-increasing use of microtransactions. I mean, they got a battle pass now. Season pass has got to be so exciting for you folks. Just more stuff to grind for, as if, you know, grinding for bikes and clothes and shoes and <clears throat> your whatever else in career. Even your freaking Gatorade, you got to buy and microtransaction that, which is ridiculous. You know, I'd love to see Monster in there, too. Why not? You know, at $6 a can just for your character, you know. And uh, and then, you know, FC24, it's not really any better. Just, it's buggy. There's things that aren't really done very well. And, uh, I mean, the, the amount of teams and the rosters are good. But again, it's like EA's sports games, they, they break the games. They suck. And why are we paying for this every year? Honestly, we shouldn't. Because they're just getting enough to grind more opportunities, more frustrating moments for you to just really end up paying for stuff to make it easier or just to get past something. The uh, the flair and animations too, even in just menus, is worse. It's just not getting any better. So EA really needs to have some competition for sports games. Because this is why ultimately these games suck. EA doesn't have any competition. And as soon as there was, and they started doing things better, EA would start changing stuff. That's why capitalism works, folks. Also, so we got the writer's strike. So this is a writer's and actor's strike. This has been going on now for um, for a while. Uh, but companies failed to reach an agreement on Friday. Um, <clears throat> and they're, they're still striking at the studios. And... Uh, yeah, they haven't been able to reach an agreement. They were going to be reaching uh, or coming back to talks again today. Um, but the union has a 90% uh, strike vote. So it still has to be approved. 
um, and so that are still coming to the table, uh, thankfully, to be able to come to an agreement. Um, and yeah, again, that's today. But, uh, but yeah, they're, the union is getting pretty close to striking, and if they actually do, that will just push off more things um, to be able to do. So how does this affect gaming? So right now there's games in development that have voice acting and motion capture. And pretty much the majority of people that are in voice acting and motion capture, whether for movies, games, or podcasts, or whatever else, <clears throat> even doing ads and stuff, they need to be able to... Um, well, let's see, how can I say this? It, it, it affects all of that type of production. I mean, if you don't have your voice for your character, you can't, you, you know, go any further. You can't do anything um, in that department. Same with motion capture. If you don't have your man or woman or uh, self-identifier, you know, then you can't move forward uh, with certain lines of the production for something. So if it's a game, luckily you can still work on creating maps. You can polish uh, the game store because that's the most important aspect for them. So there's still some things that devs can do uh, but really, it's like you need your you need your personas in the game, and if yeah, and if this continues to work, we're probably going to see some uh, delays on some of these games. And uh, we don't know exactly when, but we do know that this affects quite a few of the big publishers. So this would be Activision Blizzard, this would be Destiny, this would be EA, Epic Games, Insomniac, and Warner Brothers. And there's others too, but those are like some of the bigger names. And they make a lot of different games. They, you know, AAA, AA type of stuff. <clears throat> and so that could even affect like Suicide Squad. That could affect Outlaws. Star Wars Outlaws. That could affect um, the, uh, the next Legend of Zelda, maybe. Depending on where it's made. Um, <laughs> the next sports games. Even though they keep using the same uh, narrator. But yeah, the next Call of Duty and the next game from Blizzard. Um, again, you know, games are years in production. But yeah, if this strike goes on, it, it it will affect games that are coming out later this year. Or that are coming out especially next year. So yeah, hopefully this gets resolved. And I'm not necessarily going to pick a side on who's right or who's wrong. It's just, hey, two sides of the party are just trying to figure out how they can agree. And, you know, you got to be able to do that in everything. Also, too, the union is asking for uh, fair wages. So they need, like, a living adjustment. And, yeah, inflation went insane, and so it is pretty expensive. But as we continue to increase wages to afford living, living just continues to go up in price because you keep flooding the system with more money. And ultimately, that, that never works, folks. And it, you gotta enjoy the recession so that you can get prices back down. And I know that sucks, but it's something really good to pay for. Because ultimately, the recession happens anyway. So many right now have side jobs. They're going back to waitressing, or or they're trying to find other, uh, um, other things they can do for acting that are outside of the union. Um, and only really a few make it big. And so they want to kind of also create some rules to make some of the smaller fish have, quote, more opportunities or kind of be looked at more. But honestly, that's not how the industry goes. I mean, if you aren't in the top 1%, you're not going to make it, you know? And that's really just how it is. I had a buddy trying to do uh, get into acting, and it's just like, dude, please, like, don't waste your time. Do not waste your time. Do it on something else. And maybe some of you two out there have been trying something for years. And, you know, maybe it's just time to quit. You know, we're not all amazing at everything, and that's okay. And sometimes it's just time to walk away to try something else and focus on making that money. At the end of the day, that's really what matters. I mean, it pays for your future family. It pays for your future kids. It pays for future cars, the bigger house you're going to need, um, the trips you want to go on, the memories you want to make. It, it pays for all of that stuff. And if you don't have money, you can't do any of that. Uh, let's see. The union also wants medics on site. Uh, so some have medics on site, but other studios or other productions, they don't have medics. They got to call them. And I thought that was kind of funny. It's just like, yeah, that should be a given. Uh, even if you're 
not doing anything crazy or not having stuntmen or anything, you should still have medics on site. Because people can have heart attacks, people can choke on stuff, people can have other accidents. I mean, it happens. Also, the union is wanting to make sure that um, AI will not be used for writing in the future or voices. And so this is something, too, that I think is going to become more of a reality as we go on down the line. The union right now is shoot is, you know, fighting for the future of their job. Because AI is ultimately going to take over some of this stuff. We even got to see that the apology from uh, Unity was written by an AI. <laughs> So whether we like to think about it or not, folks, AI is going to replace some jobs. And we're going to feel that in the first world countries, absolutely. We're going to feel that in America and in Europe. And um, and yeah, we're definitely going to see it in the entertainment industry, any type of documentation. Um, I mean, we're going to see that. And AI is continuing to improve. Um, I did have uh, some time to look into ChatGTP with kind of how it's doing and I also played around with it for a while and boy do I got some story for you so that'll be a separate video um, and I will link that to gaming but yeah stay tuned for that so yeah good luck to the union I mean we'll see what happens later into this week so far there's been no news and I doubt they came to an agreement today it's already four o'clock in other news we also got Crystal Dynamics is now delisting Marvel Avengers Finally, on all platforms, this was a horrible game. Nobody liked it. The expectations were crushed. But still, this had a 4.9 out of 10. And this is a better rated game back in 2019, 2020 than a lot of games they can actually produce today. And I think it just needs to be a testament to how crappy the gaming industry has really become. And so, folks, you know, vote with your money. Decide where you're going to put it. Invest in research a little bit. But don't just give companies their money, especially with early access, too. I really hate early access. Because if the game sucks or the servers don't work, well, then you just wasted your money for your three to five days of extra play time. You know what I mean? But yeah, they're finally going to take Marvel Avengers off, and uh, yeah, it'll be gone. Which would be wonderful. Also, BioWare has a lawsuit. So we know that BioWare got rid of a lot of it, quite a few employees comparatively. It was about 20 or 25 employees total. Well, seven of the layoffs were like, no, we're not taking the severance package. It wasn't fair. And now we're suing you for a fair severance and punitive damages uh, for poor treatment. Whether there was poor treatment there or not, I don't know. I've worked with people where, you know, if the blender breaks and we don't get another one right away, it's... Uh, it's punitive damages for poor treatment. And then other people, you know, that we know there's sexual misconduct in the gaming industry. And there's uh, there's other issues, too, with, like, long hours. And, and uh, well, yeah, you want to talk about long hours. I mean, 72 hours, folks. But I'm happy with 72 hours, ultimately, at the end of the day. Because it makes money. It buys stuff. And so I'm all for that. I mean, if I got to work even more, uh, my longest week ever was 144. Would I want to do that all the time? Could I do that all the time? No, but still, I mean, money is money, folks. It's that simple. So we'll see what happens from this. Um, this has uh, currently been filed officially, so it's going to work through the court system. Uh, these seven did not accept the current severance package. The others did. So it's just these seven, if the lawsuit actually wins, these seven will actually get something better than what those <laughs> that accepted got. Uh, but two things are hard for everybody right now. So, I mean, if you were offered um, thousands of dollars with uh, medical benefits and stuff like that, I don't know exactly what the terms were of the severance with BioWare. But, yeah, I mean, if someone could hand you 5000 bucks, that might be worth it. That, that might pay for a couple of months, depending on where you live. Maybe just a month, depending on where you live. Just scary to think about. Also, too, BioWare is still trying to make Dragon Age 4, which is uh, Dreadwolf. This is supposed to come out late 2023. I don't think it's going to happen, folks. There's still no official date on actually when in this quarter they're gonna re it's going to release. And I think it's going to be pushed back now to 2024. It's already a small studio. The studio only has so much money. And if the lawsuit kills it, well, there goes the game. So we'll have to see what happens. In other news, uh, Sony explained why they took the KOTOR remake trailer down. 
So we got to see this about a week ago, and it's like, wait a minute, why did they take it down? Why are they not explaining anything? Uh, you know, Knights of the Old Republic has been a wonderful franchise and series. Again, I don't think people would enjoy it like they do today, just like Starfield. So Knights of the Old Republic is very much the same way. There's a lot of running. There's a lot of moving around and doing stuff. Um, you know, you're not collecting everything. There's no, like, over-encumbrance in a way, at least from what I remember. But it is a long game. It's it's not super fast action all the time. There's a lot of talking to other NPCs and stuff and traveling to places. And it is a fun game if you can get into it. Um, but I do fear that the slow pace of what gaming used to be compared to the fast pace today is that people just aren't necessarily patient enough. So if we actually had a KOTOR remake, I don't know if some people would like it because, again, it's kind of a slower game. But Sony explained that they had their music license from Disney expiring. That was in the trailer, and so they had to take the trailer down. So is it canceled? We know it's had some problems. We know it's actually been in the making for a while. Uh, but we honestly don't know. There's not a lot of chat about that. We had a releasement trailer in 21 and that's kind of where it's been. And now they're saying that their license is expiring from Disney. It's like, okay, if your license expires, are you able to have Star Wars music in a Star Wars game to begin with? Like, are they going to buy another one? Again, there wasn't very much information. They did at least tell us that much, which is great, but yeah. I'm kind of worried about the KOTOR remake. I really hope it's good. My favorite, one of my favorite characters of all time in gaming is in KOTOR. It's the robot, which I forget his name, of course, because I can't remember names to save my life. But I love that robot. He's just kind of grumpy old man. And yeah, I'm getting there. I identify. Also with the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. So we thought this was over, but the FTC has decided that they're going to appeal... And they're going to still tr gonna try to prevent Microsoft from buying Activision Blizzard. So this basically guarantees at this point that the date of October 18th is going to roll around and Microsoft is now going to have to buy Activision Blizzard. And you know, honestly, I don't know if I would follow through with it at this point. The only way, th th the only reason Microsoft has had so much trouble is because Call of Duty. That's it. The other games, nobody really cares about that much. And the fact, too, that the CMA out of the UK was like, well, you own, like, 70% of the cloud gaming industry. And uh, and so, yeah, you got to be able to do something there. So they already had a deal with Ubisoft, where Ubisoft was going to be approving the licensing and that kind of thing to be able to uh, not allow Microsoft to have a complete hold on cloud gaming. And I do think competition is good, but it's like no one else wants to do it because no one else has shown that it's proven yet. I mean, we've literally had consoles that have failed that were all cloud gaming. We've also had some um, computers, too, that were also built that way with no internal storage. And it's like, look, people don't want that product. People want to own their stuff. Now, I think Microsoft is doing a great job of kind of using blockchain with their Game Pass but yeah, at this point, good grief, man. I don't know if I would... As Phil Spencer, I don't know if I would want Activision Blizzard. I might just pay the severance fee myself and be like, look, apparently the world is not ready for this. And uh, I've already shown everything I can through the courts. And now it's being appealed. And I'm just done. I would just want to be done. I'd be like, look, I'm going to keep my money. I'm going to wait for the recession. And maybe we can work on it a couple years from now. And maybe I can actually get it at a cheaper price than $75 billion now at this point. So, yeah, how frustrating. Good gal. The uh, the FTC uh, needs to uh, take a chill pill. And I wonder, too, how much this is um, actually just more prodding from other people in the industry or also still from Sony. We don't know. So, yeah, Modern Warfare 3 is literally a month away. So Microsoft isn't going to be making any money from Modern Warfare 3. Um, yeah, Microsoft will now likely have to pay that extra $6 billion because of the closing by the 18th. And uh, Microsoft has had approval from all boards. And now the FTC is like, nope, let's drag it all through the mud again. Man, F the FTC. Serious. 
That is ridiculous. There's really just some political power play stuff going on there, which I don't understand. And, uh, oh my word. Yeah, this is getting ridiculous. In other news, there's, uh, this is also about layoffs. So, I did some layoffs talking about some other companies, including BioWare, that has just been laying off people. There's also been some more announcements for some other companies in the industry. But layoffs have been happening. There's been layoff announcements every week uh, this year besides four. So 90% of the year so far, there's been announcements for layoffs. And that's really bad. That's going to affect some gaming. That's gonna also going to affect, you know, people's lives. They got families, you know. And, uh, you know, they'll maybe get severance, but it's usually never enough, especially with what's happened with inflation over the last three years. Thank you, stimulus money. Uh, but yeah, that that should be a sign too that it in the industry things are not healthy, things aren't kosher, things aren't good, and um, people had a ton of money with the stimulus money. That's why Xboxes were selling for a thousand bucks. That's why PlayStation Fives were selling for fourteen hundred um, because you just couldn't get them fast enough. The supply chain issue wasn't helping either. But yeah, people had money, so they spent it. This is why the value of cars went up 20%, in some cases, almost 30% in value. Um, and this is why two homes went from, you know, w went up, I think, 30% uh, in the last three or four years, which is just crazy. We've also had a tripling of interest rates uh, in some cases. I mean, food, food is double. Uh, it's more than double, actually. My wife and I, we're paying double for food right now. Um, and my boys are growing, so we're going to be paying more money. My insurance went up 50%. And so I think I think this should be a sign. Um, if you're interested, there I have an economic update video on my channel that I released last week. And it's just going over some of the statistics and numbers. And just to kind of show, it's like, hey, this is not good. And every sector is struggling. There's a lot I didn't talk about in there still. I was just, I didn't want it to drone on forever. But yeah, the fact that there's 90% of the weeks this week have announcements for layoffs is not good. And I think, too, that's going to affect our games. Because, yeah, if you have less devs, if you have people that are upset, if you have lawsuits like what BioWare has, um, if you have continued layoffs, uh, things are not good, and that will affect the quality of the game. You also have people leave, try to find something else that's better. That's been happening for two years. And then you get new people that really don't know what they're doing. And so, yeah, you, then you get games like Saints Row and Forspoken and Gollum. I mean, those were just horrible. They shouldn't even been released, really, in my opinion. Especially Gollum. But, uh, good grief, I'm glad some games aren't coming out. Uh, some franchises are leaving alone because, um, yeah, they're just screwing up the games real bad. So, take that as another sign, folks. The economy is not healthy, you know, and prepare for what's coming. All, let's see, lastly, we got Assassin's Creed Mirage. So, most people are enjoying the stealth aspects. Glad to be back in the setting of the Middle East, you know, and uh, slicing people, not having a level cap, uh, like we mentioned in our kind of look review, which, yes, I have not personally played. I tried to make that as clear as I could in the vid. Um, but I did watch some videos. I did watch some gameplay. I did watch some people's kind of thoughts on the game after being able to play it. If I could, I would. I would basically buy every single freaking game, but I don't have a thousand a year to be able to do that. Uh, or 1500 however much it would cost. But I absolutely would love to do that in the future. Actually, make something through, like, t-shirts and hats or something. And, uh, actually, you know, provide you guys something. But, may, yeah, maybe in the future. So yeah, Assassin's Creed Mirage, um, again, players are enjoying the stealth, they're enjoying the parkour, the crowd blending, but what they complain about is that the small map, limited weapons and gadgets, the fetch quests, uh, just collecting a bunch of things in the game, we address that too. And personally, I think this uh, Mirage is going to be kind of another Starfield game in a way where people either hate it or love it. And for those of you that love it, you know, that's wonderful, that's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I, I personally would like to have a full game. But this too could have been a test just to see, hey, is Assassin's Creed still alive after Valhalla? And are people interested to go back? Let's see what the numbers are. And so they release a small game that's not as much risk to see if people actually want to go for it. And I think it's been good enough because the scores are... 
per, from the critics on Metacritic are 77 out of 100. And then the users are 7.0 out of 10. So they're pretty closely correlated. They're both agreeing with each other. And they both do talk about some of the issues. And they also talk about some of the things that they love about the game. But people are really enjoying the game so far. And um, I just wish it was a full game, not a, quote, full game made from DLC. I'm ready for these large open worlds again. I'm ready for these big expansions, these exploration, the interaction between players and story and discovering things. And Assassin's Creed did really good at that, you know, back in the day. And, and yeah, I think they will go back. They got six projects that we know, well, now five, now that Mirage came out. But, yeah, they got five other projects that are going to be coming out. And we'll all see what they do with them, but uh, I'm not, I'm leery. I'll say it that way. So lastly, all I got is just an update on the channel. If you guys want to top out or cap out, whatever, that's all right. I'll, um, thanks for joining me and stuff. I'm, uh, you can find me over at Twitch at Don't Tread on Thee. And you can also find me here at YouTube at Gaming Garbage 22 If you have comments, if you have suggestions... Um, critiques or whatever, please leave a comment. I enjoy reading those. I interact with those as much as I can. Boy, there were a bunch of you on Starfield. That really blew me away. Um, here I'm going to get into the update of the channel. But yeah, I did a Starfield review and I thought, ah, maybe I'll get 10 or 20 views maybe because, you know, we already have all of our opinions of Starfield for those of us that could play. And the rest of us that couldn't, well, we just watched other people play and we have our opinions still. So everybody has their opinions already. But the fact that I had 1.4 thousand, uh, yeah, 1.4k views just is crazy. I did not expect that at all. Thank you, though, for those that subbed. Thank you for those that commented on the videos and were able to chat about some stuff. Um, again, yeah, it's a game I don't think is for everybody. You know, personally, I just appreciate it for what it is. It's a Bethesda game. And I do worry, too, about... Um, kind of the future games. Will they be accepted as much? I don't know. Elder Scrolls 6, Fallout 5, we'll have to see. But yeah, the channel now has 100... Roughly 150 subs. So thank you. My goal for this year was to get to 50. That is just crazy to me. Um, I'll continue to earn your viewership. And then please comment for feedback. Uh, you know, be nice, right? You know, my heart's on my sleeve, folks. So yeah, be nice. But yeah, give me some good feedback. Um, some things I can't change. It's just, part of it is just money. Part of it, too, is just the setup in my home right now. I just do the best that I can. My favorite was, a uh, guy was like, you sit on a menu screen and you talk. <laughs> and I was like, yes! Yes, I do. Um, it's a cheap... It's a cheap setup, you know, I don't have to buy a capture card, my laptop is about to die anyway, so using Twitch through my console is great for that. Um, and my goal is to provide substance, it's really not to provide flashy a flashy show for viewers. There's plenty of other channels out there, I mean, good grief, we have people like Amaranth that have a ton of stuff, and that's... That is just slobbery content, you know, that, that, but that just reduces you to less than a man. It's just, if they can capture you with your hormones, you know, your vi visuals, good grief, folks. That's uh, that's pretty horrible. Um, that's not substance. I really like um, channels like The Angry Joe Show or like Young Yeah or Bellular, Bellular News um, and Mr. Maddie Plays and The Act Man because they actually provide content, and I really enjoy that. And so that's the same focus here. You know, you j I just don't have a fancy camera. And I'm just here making my channel and sharing my passion for gaming and ultimately also to invest in you folks. Whether that's advice, whether that's just like what I sprinkled a little bit throughout the channel or talking about something or sharing the economics, which affects everybody. I'm really here to just be, you know, tr see if I can make something be a part of something. Because there's a real lack of investment in our men. And a lot of guys don't know how to be men either. And, uh, you know, that breaks my heart some. It really does. Because uh, I remember going through that, and there's just even less support today. There's less growth today than when I was a kid. And understanding what it meant to be. So, yeah. Also, too, um, it's really up to you folks if you promote the channel. So I'm not... I'm relying on the algorithm some. I'm trying to drop videos... 
kind of at a certain time to maximize my viewership, you know, because there's more people on at a certain time of day and certain days of the week. But really, it's going to be up to you guys. So if you like the content, like and sub, but also a favor, you know, spread it to other people. Share, talk about the channel uh, if you guys like it that much. And all I ask for is just the opportunity. This channel isn't going to be for everybody, and that's okay. But yeah, this channel is more like a five-course meal <laughs> instead of just fast food. So fast food is quick and easy. It's, you know, it's in your face. You get to chow down. But boy, if, any, if none of you have ever had a five-course meal, that is really quality food. And it's worth waiting for. And that's what I'm trying to make with the channel. You know, we cover news. We cover big events. We're covering publishers and game reviews. We're c covering, uh, taking a look at Game Pass or other things in the industry. We're also doing some playthroughs for games, some co-op stuff. I mean, there's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a five-course meal. And it takes time to get invested. If you need instantaneous entertainment, my channel is probably not for you, and that's okay. We can go our separate ways and respect each other and, you know, go enjoy YouTube or Instagram or whatever else is out there now. But really, this is going to come down to you folks promoting the channel and just sharing and caring and commenting and liking and subbing and telling your friends and... And uh, that's all I'm asking for, is just a shot for your viewership. <sighs> oh yeah, lastly, uh, if you're interested in a Starfield hat, I have some. So the Starfield hat is a gray curved bill with a patch of the Constellation logo on the front and then gaming garbage, gaming garbage stitched on the back. Everything is stitched. Nothing's printed or painted or anything like that. It's higher quality and it'll last a while. My hat still looks pretty good um, after a month. And uh, yeah, I gotta get, yeah. And two, if you're way out of the way, I can just ship it to you. Um, what I have been doing is uh, people are just mailing me um, oh god, I just forgot what they're called now. Money orders. Because I don't want to use Venmo, I don't want to use PayPal and all of that. I really don't know how to use that very well. So, money orders are working great. Um, I'm getting them through the mail, and that's working out just fine. And then, um, I, you know, I cash them or deposit them into my bank. And I ship you the hat, uh, through Pirate Ship, which is a wholesaler for shipping. So... Shipping from Oregon to Georgia, you know, was four and a half dollars instead of like twelve or fifteen, depending on the box. I do use my own box and print out the the label and slap it on there and boops, get it scanned and off it goes. And so yeah, that got a system down that that's working pretty good. Honestly, I'll continue to use this system as uh, as I continue to make things on the channel and and uh, give you guys the opportunity to buy them. So thanks again for tuning in. You can always. Let me know what you think about the channel, things that do well, things that do bad, uh, or things that are just absolutely horrible. You know, again, I can't guarantee I'll change anything, uh, but I do want to improve where I can with where I'm at in my life and where with my budget is at, which is basically zero. Uh, it's basically zero right now. We're all a little broke, probably. So I'm sure you guys can understand that. So thanks again, folks. Welcome all the new subbers and everything. There was like a bunch of you this last week, which blew me away. And uh, yeah, hang in there. There's a whole war going on in Israel, so I would buy gas today or, or tomorrow. And that's going to screw with oil prices. Oil prices already shot up today. Um, you know, the price of oil for a barrel already shot up so yeah gas is basically going up either later today or tomorrow so i'd get some gas pretty soon just to get ahead of that curve a little bit so also winter is coming to boy just in the uh new england northeast part of the country just be aware of what's going on um but yeah there's definitely colder air it's mixing in with some moisture and so yeah you, some of you are already just getting a good amount of rain so yeah just be careful just plan ahead and i'll see you guys on the next one